action. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, buddy, can I be uh, back in the car, please? In policing, no traffic stop is the same. Today, we're going to find that out. How many times have we watched the news and we hear somebody say, it was just an average traffic stop? Sadly, my friends, that's not the reality. We're going to find that out today on this episode of Switch. As always, this episode of Switch, we're going to switch the roles between police officers and civilians and see how they respond. Our suspects will be our real police officers, and then the police officers in the scenarios will be our civilians. Let's go. So this is what we got. So you're gonna be, uh, this is the guy that you're gonna encounter in the car. I'm just gonna give you that now. He's gonna be in the car. Okay. You're doing a traffic stop. So we're gonna simulate that those barrels right there are your police car, all right? Where the scene is gonna start. Yep. We're gonna assume that the car just yielded. Okay, so we're not gonna, I'll tell you when to be here to start there. We're gonna assume the car just yielded, okay. and then that's when you gotta do what you gotta do. So walk up, be yourself. Hey, sir, how you doing? Whatever you wanna do, handle it as you would okay. any other officer would. All right? Okay. You ready sure. for this? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Three, two, one, action. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, buddy, can I be uh, back in the car, please? Hey, buddy, you're right. So your hand behind your uh, your back there. Do you mind show me your hands real quick? Yo, whoa, oh shoot! Back up, please, back up. Please, back up, back up. Okay, got a man down. Man, that was crazy. Like, cause as you want to be like as chill as possible. But then you also want to like make sure that you're, you know, assuming all risks too. But it was, it was yeah, man. So what did you notice as soon as you got out of your car? Well, he opened his car right away. So I'm just like, wait, so do I yell at the guy to get back in there? Because I don't want to sound, you know, too hostile. But I also want to be reasonable with that approach. Did it make you nervous? It did. I just said, oh crap, what's gonna happen now? You, you, you know, because when he came out, he had his back to his back pockets. I'm already thinking the worst. Like, uh, I don't want to assume, but what, what, what was the worst? What's the worst for you? Uh, just having the guy that pulled a gun out on me. Okay. And well, why, why would you be thinking that in your mind? Though? Well, because you know, uh, when you just play video games or you see things on TV and movies, you just see the guy pull the gun out from, you know, from his back area. So as soon as I saw that, that's what my mind was thinking. Like, oh crap, he has a gun probably. Okay. So do you think that you were ahead of the game or behind the game? Cause what did he do? He went on a full on assault. Yeah. And from the looks of it, it looks like he had the upper hand on you because he, he actually got a few rounds off right. before you were able to pull your gun out and then actually respond to that. Right, right. So, uh, yeah, he did have the upper hand on me, and that's, I don't know what I said. Let me ask you this. So if you had to redo that scenario, let's say we had the luxury of looking at sure. it from the, the, the outside looking in. Right. If you had the luxury, how would you do it differently? If any way, would you do it differently? Um, probably engage him a lot faster than you know, me being a little bit reluctant, you know, me trying to think of the scenario, and I think that that's what I was doing, was trying to really just rationalize it as opposed to just reacting. Would it be, would it have been wrong if you had just got out of your car with your gun out already, what, the moment you saw him get out of the car? <sighs> um, I don't think so, because, I mean, now, like, in hindsight, he was coming at me, and he was without any kind of, you know, any, you know, just, you know, uh, regard was just starting to... So you said it. something that's critical, you said hindsight. Right. Hindsight is like, well, absolutely, I'm gonna get out with a gun. Right. But what's crazy is we don't have the luxury, but a lot of people don't have the luxury, right. or you don't have the luxury as that officer right. of hindsight. Right. And so what would typically happen is you will get out of your car with your gun out, and what's everybody else gonna be doing? Why does he have his gun out on a guy that's just standing there talking to him? Exactly. Is, exactly. That, is that pretty much how it will go? That's exactly how it will go, yeah. Mason, did you feel like, uh, did he give it just, you know, what would you say from your perspective? As, just have, obviously being an officer, the first thing I thought when I got out the car with me knowing the scenario, I'm like, this boy better back up. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't moving, all he's doing is just trying to talk to me, but he doesn't know what I have behind my back, right? Right. So kind of how you, stated to him it's not wrong to pull your gun out immediately right when you get out that car because you're dealing with the unknown at this point that is something that typically a person does, do not do is get out their car and mm -hmm. put their hands behind their back right and pull them over. so here's a big big reveal everybody the big reveal is this this scenario Ivan mean, I don't know if you know this but this scenario actually happened in the state of Oregon where an Oregon State Trooper did a traffic stop on an individual for a vehicle code violation and as he does that traffic stop once he goes, as soon as he pulls over, the guy gets out just like Officer Mason did right here and has his hand behind his back. Mm. 
and then he goes on the full on assault on the officer and now the officer has to handle that situation the best is the, the best of his ability right one thing that i noticed that you didn't do you didn't use your cover i did not yeah you're absolutely right. moving around so you were moving around here do you think that might be something that an officer might have to keep in their mind absolutely right Right, because yeah, just, you're in a, now you're in a gun fight, you're in a gun battle. So and it's crazy too, because you even said, "Hey, just use that as your vehicle for whatever you may need." And I didn't know that was a foreshadow of, "Hey, yeah, you may want to use that thing back there for protection." Isn't it crazy how many things that you have to think about? Right. In such a short amount of time. Right. Absolutely. And so the reality of that situation was that officer, that state trooper, was able to return fire on that suspect. Right. And the suspect drove away. He ended up passing away miles down the road after it. Mm. But this was a real life scenario. So as crazy as it may seem, right? Because I know you're probably thinking like. Man, what is he doing just getting out of the car like that? That's exactly what I thought. This happens to our officers. This episode of The Switch would not be possible without our sponsors. I want to thank SC Village for allowing us to utilize their facility, but most importantly, I also want to thank 88 Tactical for sending out all the equipment that we were actually able to use during these scenarios. Thanks again, guys.